We're just going to insert this right here. So I got this bag of printed parts here and I've got these skate bearings. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the Postomatic filament spool winder. This is on Maker World. I'll have a link to it. Basically, I had a cardboard spool of filament that I had on the AMS light. And when I went to pull it off, it was slightly different size and it didn't wanna come and I ripped one hole into the spool off. So I decided when I'm gonna use stuff in the AMS light, if it's on cardboard and it's even remotely snug, I'm just gonna transfer it to a plastic spool because then I'm not gonna worry about ripping the cardboard off completely. I, I basically lost that spool and uh, yeah, I wasn't very happy. Before we get that filament spooler put together and the other one that I'm gonna review in this video, let's talk about today's sponsor, PCBWay, who made me this cool little aluminum 3D printed Benchy. Here we are in PCBWay's site. You've got you know your instant quote, CNC 3D printing, PCB assembly. They have product capabilities here listed that show you all the different kinds of PCBs and things they can do. They've got projects here that are shared, so you can go in and find things that you might want to do. But the thing that really is cool to me is they do 3D printing. When I need something printed in metal, I come here. I upload my STL or similar file. I put up what the quantity I want, design units, material, all this stuff. And you just send off the quote when it's done. Someone checks it. And once they've decided that it's going to be viable, they send you the price. Thanks, PCBWay, for sponsoring this video. I really, really do appreciate it. You guys rock. This is just something you put together. You put your drill on, you turn it, and it'll take the cardboard and put it on the plastic. So let me get this put together, and then we'll be back and check it out. Now, I've got all the parts laid out. I'm just going to go ahead and put this together. But real quick... Um, this only takes about 500 grams of filament and it took, I think like 20, 22 hours total. Uh, it is multiple plates. And what I did is I just ran it on my X1C and let it tie it up for about a day. And yeah, here it is. All right. So I think I finally got this figured out and I'll put together, um, to take me a little bit of time. I'm not very mechanical though. So there's a video that's linked in the, um, Maker World entry for this, so you can go watch that. That's what I did, but I had to watch it a bunch of times. Sometimes he gets in the way of the camera, but I figured it out. So yeah, basically we're gonna take a drill bit, a hex drill bit, and it goes in right there. We're gonna turn that clockwise and then it'll do everything. So you have these little sections and they just twist apart. And then we put the spool on there. So I'll do that real quick and show you. So you would just take your spool, insert this into either end, and then these twisted together, and then there's your spool on there pretty good. See? And then, yeah, so let me get this loaded up and get the drill out and we'll give it a go. And as you put the filament through this scrap of uh, PTFE tube, you're gonna bring it over here and you're gonna put it on. And they just showed taping it to the side until you got a couple of loops going. So I don't know how well it's going to hold because we're doing uh, PETG. And then it wants you to manually do a couple just to make sure it's hooked. So we'll do that. And now I'll get the drill out and we'll get that going. So in the video, he was just using a screwdriver. But instead of the screwdriver tip, he was using the hex piece. So we'll go ahead and have the hex piece going out. Now, you'll want to go slow with this. Uh, the faster you go, the more problems you're going to have. And then we're just going to insert this right here. I'm going to reposition the camera to give you a little bit better view. Okay, there's the problem. If you stop, it's going to do that. So, yeah, don't stop unless you're ready to stop. Um, let me fix that. Okay, there we go. That should be good for now. And we're off to the races. So, yeah. I see a problem here. It's supposed to have these little 
wipers, these things, but they walk away almost immediately. So now I've got a nice tangle here. Great. So let's go ahead and get all this transferred. These wipers are there to slow that down and for whatever reason, they're not engaging. So this ends up spinning faster than this can keep up with. That said, even if I just do this manually, it's it's getting caught up. So I almost need to use my hand as a brake. All right. So I'm just gonna full send it and we're gonna, whatever happens, happens. It started to get lopsided. Um, I don't know how well you can appreciate that, but this is markedly higher than this side. And what happened is this thing got down here to the end. It kind of moves with the gears as the gears go. It walks up and down this, and then it got down here and just stayed for much longer than it would at the other end. So it would get stuck and then eventually go back. But um, yeah, I mean, probably room for improvement, but this is such an easy project. Like I said, it used uh, less than a kilogram and you needed, I think, 12 of these skate bearings. So I'm not really out a lot here. But now I can use um, oddly shaped cardboard ones on my AMS light, or I can transfer to plastic and just use them in the AMS because some companies don't put any resin or anything on this edge and it can like gum up the AMSs for bamboo with cardboard dust. So I'll still use it but it's definitely not as good as I thought. And this pen is walking itself out too. Um, yeah, I'll have a link to this down in the description and sticky comment, it's a Possumatic. This one is the manual filament spool winder. You've got a couple of pieces here. I started to put it together. Um, it's pretty easy. You take the big gear, you put it in there and then you thread the handle on. Then this is kind of like this, except it's got four things on the end. The four things on the end push through the gear. Uh, you put that on there. You put your spool on there, put that on there. It just pops out. Then you have this little thing here. Turn it around. We're just gonna put that on there and then the other part comes on there and it helps keep the spool in place. And then we have, uh, you know, the these to do that. They connect, I believe, through those pegs. You can see them there. And then, yeah, then you just do this one manually. I think this one's gonna work a lot better. I just wanna show you this part real quick. So this goes on the inside, not the outside like I thought. And then you push this in, and then when you're done, those two pegs line up and you get this little clip that was printed. I forgot about the clip. And then the clip just goes on there and keeps that in place. Well, we're not off to a good start. I just broke the peg off. I probably should have printed this in ABS. I will do that if I decide to keep this. Um, there's probably a couple other parts that'd be better in ABS, but I just printed everything in PLA. But you can see the, the little thing broke off. So not a big deal. This should stay in there pretty stable. And I mean, just this will keep it in a little. But uh, worth noting that if you print this one, I would do at least that part and these probably in ABS just so the pegs are good. Well, the handle just broke too. Uh, I do not blame the model for this. I blame the specific PLA I used here. It's apparently just garbage. It is a just random brand. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna go fire up the ABS printer in the garage and we're gonna reprint all of the stuff in this color. Let me go redo this. I went ahead and replaced the stuff on the other side with ABS, I'll show you in a second. So that peg just breaks off. Like, it's not thick enough. It broke off on PLA, broke off on ABS. So exact same thing. And all this does is this keeps this from like bouncing off. So I guess what I'll do is when I'm cranking it, I will reach around here and just hold this in place, which is fine because you're cranking from this side anyway. So, you know, just casually hold it and do that. But then you can see I went ahead and replanted the gears and the handle. Uh, ignore how the handle came out kind of jank here. I'm, I'm This is only the second time I printed with ABS and I'm not really sure what happened there. That's where the supports were. Let me go ahead and get this started and then I'll get you a better angle and we'll try this one. Okay, you can kind of see here. 
Uh, again, I'm gonna take this hand over here and I'm gonna hold the axle down and make sure I got this going the right direction. There we go. Well, here's the problem. I shouldn't have it this way. Well, now the handle's stripping out. Fun, fun, fun. Guys, I don't like this one either. Okay, believe it or not, I just like doing it like this. It's gonna take forever, but it's working. It's actually working extremely nice. Let me bring it around here. If I just do this, it seem to work okay. But again, this is gonna take literally forever. Like this is not comfortable or anything, but that handle just, it, it's stripped and it's trying to come off. And if I twist it, these gears are kind of cattywampus and they bind and, cause it's not staying in there tight, but there's nothing to hold it in there tight other than that little clip that broke. So if you know of a good winder that I can print, uh, please let me know because these two struck out. Um, thanks for stopping by guys. I appreciate the view. Um, <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.